What is up to all the Antenne Inc. subscribers and viewers? In this video, we want to talk about countries, especially their governments. And we mostly want to talk about different forms of government you see all around the world and all throughout history. We hope you enjoy. We'll start with aristocracy. A lot of people believe that aristocracy is the best form of government, where the elite is in charge. But in history, you don't really see much of that. It is true that the elites are in power in an aristocracy form of government, but it could be any type of elite. The elites could be educated people, it could be wealthy people, or it could be a family like Britain. These are considered an aristocracy. Saudi Arabia could be considered an aristocracy because all the power is in a family's hands. So these types of governments are a type of aristocracy. But it could be under different governments. Like one of them could be a republic. One could be a monarchy. The other one could be a constitutional monarchy. And many more. But right now in the world, there are no countries that have an aristocracy type of government. If you search aristocracy types of countries in the world, Google will say there is none at the moment. But the most recent one is England before World War I, where all the power belonged to the royal family. Another form of government that everybody wants to know about is anarchy. Some people actually believe that anarchy is actually a form of government and people actually live without government happily ever after. And they say the people of that type of government are so advanced that they don't need rules to keep them in line. But this is not the definition of anarchy and it's wrong. Anywhere you read about the word anarchy or non-government, the answer is always complete chaos. And whoever has more power is over someone that has no power. Cause let's be honest, humans need rule and their form of anarchy is like a dream. Some people don't believe that communism is a terrible thing and they say you're explaining the wrong form of communism. I have one question for these people. Why don't you see one successful communist country? The Soviet Union obviously collapsed. Cuba, a country that stuck in the 1950s. When you visit Cuba, it feels like you traveled back in time. There is no proper internet and anything modern. And this is their cars, mostly 1950s American cars. And they keep rebuilding them and driving them around. Laos, another communist country that's being held back because of this type of government. Everybody knows North Korea too. The only communist country that's actually successful is China. And the only reason is that the country allows people to start businesses and grow. Something that you do not see in other communist nations. In our recent video, we talked about monarchy and we used Saudi Arabia as an example. And one person is in charge of the entire country. But some people said that this is not a monarchy. That is true. This is not the only monarchy in the world. Morocco is considered a monarchy. Britain is considered a monarchy, but they call themselves a constitutional monarchy. And that means the king or queen doesn't have the power they once had. The parliament has the true power. The Netherlands is the same. In a constitutional monarchy, the parliament has absolute power. But a complete monarchy is a form of dictatorship and one person has all the power. The next type of government is socialism. In our previous video, we said the USSR was a socialist country. China is still a socialist country. But a lot of people commented that European countries are actually socialists. But countries in Europe that have the social word in their government, countries like Germany, Sweden, and Finland, they are not a socialist country, but they're truly a capitalist country. But you could say in their government, they have a tiny bit of socialism used in it. And that means they basically give you free health care, unemployment, and most importantly, free education. If these countries were completely socialist, they would be considered a communist nation, and there would be no difference from the USSR. 
In these European countries, you find rich people, and that's billionaires. So you can't say these are socialist nations, but you could say there's some socialism used in their government. So if it's like that, China is not a socialist then, right? Yes, China is a socialist nation. If you want to start a business and be rich, you have to be under the CCP, and that's the Chinese Communist Party. So unlike social capitalist countries where everyone can get rich, but in China, you have to be in the right situation to get rich. But either way, if you get rich, the power will still be in the CCP's hand and they could control you however they want. So you can't consider China a social capitalist. We got to dictatorship, something that we all know. A dictator is like cancer. Any type of government could have a dictator in it. They could consider themselves a democracy, but they're truly a dictator. Like Iran is considered an Islamic Republic, but it's a dictatorship. Or Egypt, it's considered a democracy, but it's ran by a dictator. Saudi Arabia is a monarchy dictatorship. Russia Federation is considered a democracy, but Putin runs the whole thing. It's a federal and a democracy, but a dictatorship. It could be a democracy nation or consider themselves a democracy, but it's truly a dictatorship. Democracy basically means power to the people. The people choose the president. The people choose the people in the parliament. And any rules that wants to be set in stone, it has to be voted by the people. There has been democracy set in stone in a lot of countries, but because of the people and the people in charge, it went towards a bad route. A country like Turkey, a government that considers itself a democracy, but it's ran by a dictator that stays in office term by term, and that shows that democracy is fake. Putin is the same, he's president for life. A democracy has a lot to do with the culture. You can't force democracy on the people. The people have to accept this form of government. If a small percentage doesn't believe it, it's not gonna happen. You kind of have to practice democracy, and it starts at a very young age at home. You have to learn to listen to other people's ideas, and that's why it has to start at a very young age. Let's go towards secular. Let's talk about secular. Secular is a form of government where religion has nothing to do with it, like the US or France. In a secular nation, not only do they not care about your religion, but they don't ask what religion you have. The Soviets considered themselves a secular country, but when it was against it, it would kill them off. Like when they killed a hundred thousand Buddhists where they didn't want to leave the religion. In a very short period of time, the Soviet government killed these people just because they didn't want to stop believing their religion. But when the Soviet Union collapsed and Mongolia was set free as well, they found mass graves of Buddhist people where they were all buried in the 1950s. In these graves, you would find children all the way to old people. Let's get to liberal. Liberal or liberalism kind of means a freedom fighter, but freedom fighter in their own way. Liberalism is a way of finding way to make everyone equal. And the goal of freedom fighting is to make the entire nation equal. In a liberalist nation, they are very open to new rules, and they don't go by the old books anymore. If you want to see what left-wing people are, they are considered liberal. A lot of people commented that what does right-wing or left-wing mean? Just like we said, the left is considered liberal, but a far-left person is considered a Marxist or communist like the USSR, but a regular left-wing person is a liberal. The right-wing are conservatives. A right-wing person or conservative likes to keep it more old school. And when you look at the word conservative, it literally tells you what it's about. It's about conserving. 
This form of right wing and left wing is pretty much found in every government all around the world. If you want another example, it's kind of like the Democrats, where Joe Biden is the president and he's considered left wing and a liberal. But the Republican, where Donald Trump came from, is considered right wing. Just like we said, the far left is a Marxist communist person and the normal is liberal. A regular right wing person is a conservative, but a far right is a different story. This guy is a far right individual and it's considered fascism. Fascism is basically following one ideology and if anybody wants to step in the way of this ideology moving forward, they should be eliminated. So far right and far left fell off the edge. Let's get to federalism. Federalism is a deal where different states agree with each other. They set a centralized government and create a country. Everybody knows the most successful federal country is the US. The central government, where the president is the president of the entire country, is located in the White House in Washington DC, the capital of the US. Washington DC is not a state. All the important organs of the US is located in Washington DC. From the Pentagon, Department of State, Supreme Court, CIA, US Treasury, FBI, and many more. All this is located in this capital. Just like we said, it's not a state, it's a district. District of Columbia. That's the power of the country. But the states have their own type of power. A person is voted in to be the government of each state. These states can set their own types of laws. But the federal laws are set in the Congress, and that's located in DC as well. Like California, which is bordered to Mexico, can't just go ahead and make a deal with Mexico through California. And that's because without the permission of the federal government, they can't do such thing. And that means California doesn't have Department of State or an army. So the government can only change rules within the state itself. If a federal government is started in the wrong place of the world, it will lead to a collapse and it will start a civil war. A lot of people want to know what type of government does Iran have? There's a type of government called theocracy, and if you look up the definition, it basically means a government attached to a religion. Iran is a theocracy, but it's an Islamic republic. Right now, the countries that are considered theocracy are these. Vatican, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, and Iran. Some people asked about religion governments, especially Muslim. An Islamic government is a type of theocracy and we named all the examples we could. Iran, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, which was the old one, but right now is the Emirate of Afghanistan. Saudi Arabia is another form of theocracy with their own type of Islam. Pakistan is also considered an Islamic Republic. All these could be considered a theocracy. All these theocracy governments are dictatorship. Iran, Afghanistan, and Saudi Arabia are dictators. Even the Vatican is dictators. But there's only 825 people that live here, so it doesn't really count. Let's talk about totalitarian so there's no more questions left. Totalitarian means you scare the people to get what you want as a government. Experts say the most totalitarian state in the world is North Korea. And that means the people are so afraid of their leader that they don't even want to look him in the eyes. In a totalitarian state, there could be two brothers that would snitch on each other and tell the government that this guy is against you. And that's all because of fear. China is another type of totalitarian state. When they tell you to not leave the house during Corona, you better stay in the house. But a dictatorship doesn't have to be a totalitarian. Like Russia, this country is not as strict as China or North Korea. I hope there's no more questions left. In the comment section, 
Please let us know what you think about these types of governments. And if you have any new information or if we missed a type of government, please let us know.